but normally when I do these sort of presentations, I like to um, have a lot of humour through them, and I will. I have kept it really lean so that we can you can just laugh at me rather than at what I'm putting on screens. Um, I wanted to just acknowledge how um, valuable um, and how you know incredibly supported many people are up here, but the great work that Ken and and Lisa are doing. Um, I think it's really, and look, and thank you very much as well for hosting us. But um, I think it's just such an important thing that um, provides everyone with the opportunities to kind of see whether this is, to be honest, see whether this is the career for you um, in part, and also to, if it is your career, push you forward into the, the sort of the, the bigger, greater world. Um, and I personally know how much work goes into these sort of exercises. I know what toll it takes personally on people. So um, when you get a minute, please get a chance to thank them and mean that um, I, I know how much it, um, it would mean to them also that they spend hours and hours and hours working for everyone. Um, I wanted to also acknowledge all the great people you've got during the last couple of, or well, today and yesterday. Um, but anyway, you know that yourselves. Um, this is, uh, this the secret shouldn't get out about this thing because you're getting access to people that, you know, in any other bigger city, maybe you'd have to be in a queue 10 deep to come and talk to. So um, it's a great privilege. Anyway, enough of that. Um, Screen Producers Australia, I will get you here. We'll, we'll talk about once to watch, but Screen Producers Australia does three things. Um, we are the voice of the industry to government um, and to the, to the media sometimes, and we need to maybe use the media to help influence government. Um, and we are the voice of the employers when we're trying to navigate um, the employees. And I don't mean that in a kind of us versus them exercise really because a lot of people wear multiple hats, but if you are employing people, which producers do, um, that's pretty much the defining um, thing. You can, be a, you can be employed by another producer, but if you're the core producer, you are a business owner that then is employing all the other parts of what you're doing to create the content, even if you're employing yourself. Um, there's a set of challenges you have and we navigate a lot of the framework between the writers and producers, between the actors and producers, between the crew and producers. People don't really know much about that, to be honest, if they've not, even people that are working in the industry currently just assume it comes out of the air, but it doesn't. There's, a, there's an award that the government sets and then we create these uh, frameworks of payments um, and schedules and residuals and all the sort of things that we... You, when you get into producing, and some of you I know have done a great deal of producing, some of you haven't done a lot, but that is becomes your the the the, sword, the, well, the the cross you bear because you need to be responsible for other people, and I think that's the defining part of producing in my mind. You become the responsible person, the adult who has to look after, clean up after the mess, make sure everyone else has fun, create something for you, but then you're you know carrying the can maybe for years and years and years. So anyway, that's the work we do. I want to talk, as I say, at the end a little bit more about how we're government representing, but I wanted to, apart from that serious part, what the organisation does is it does a lot of programs um, to sort of support people at different points in their careers. Um, and part of that is to glue together the industry so that we can do all of those other bits of more serious work. Um, if we tried without kind of, I know there's a, you know, and not, to be honest, most people want to get something out of things. Um, there's some people who come to us to say, oh, what can we do for you? It's usually not the way it works. It's like, what can I get out of you? Um, so we try to come up with lots of things that give them advantages and opportunities if they're members or uh, even if they're not members, but they can come to our events. Um, a lot of them are Sydney focused because of the quantity of businesses and people in Sydney and the access we get to people. So throughout the year, we have quite a lot of things that happen in Sydney. Um, we have, I like, um, we do occasionally the odd exercise in Melbourne and we do a lot of programs that are with other state agencies that you probably don't always see because they might be in Perth and they're just for the Perth people and they just don't get, you know, put up into the ether. Um, the end of the year we do uh, have a big conference which we'd encourage um, you to come to and we'd encourage you to hassle other people to help you support you to come if you you have a bit of support you give don't you we do a pathway program with partnership with Clara and yeah. Tatiana and Mark during the audience today who yeah. are the new 
Yeah, great. And maybe if there's a minute or two, I mean, you might want to ask these guys also, these wonderful people who um, engage with us, um, how they exp their experiences of things. And I think there's an approach you take to a conference. We could spend a whole half an hour talking about the conference and how you might get the best out of it because it's almost, I mean, I'm, I'm, it's like this, e this exercise over three days, but steroids. on steroids, it's kind of been pumped up. And um, anyway, um, but for the purposes of, of today, let's talk about just one of our programs, which is the Ones to Watch program. And when I came into the organisation, I was very conscious of um, thinking about how we were going to find pathways, to use that word, for people to enter and experience the industry when they maybe don't have a lot of, um, don't have that immediate leap into the industry, um, which can happen only for some, but you need to be able to find the, the stretch and the pulls into um, into what's happening. And Wants to Watch is a way of um, particularly focusing the industry on a group of people. So the real value of Wants to Watch is exactly that. It's about asking everyone, look at these people. Because this is to sort of talk about the brutality of the industry. There are so many more people that would like uh, to be in this industry than there are opportunities. and. Um, there are only so many, you know, hours of the day consumers, us, have to watch screens. We all have limited time. That means that there's only so much, much content we can create or that is financed to be created. So how do you rise above the pack? And this was a way of helping people to achieve that um, and get attention. So if we go through the detail of this, it's a, this is actually a mentoring program that's reasonably unique because of the, um, the industry specific element of it and the time in which it involves people and what we do is we take and we'll work through the selection process in a minute but we take a group of people up to about 20 and match them with experienced producers now that sort of you go oh okay well, what does that mean <coughs> the point of doing that is to publicize who those people are and then to give them an opportunity as a minimum we say once every couple of weeks but it sort of depends on the relationship and how you're working with the mentor. Um, but the idea is that you can really stress test a lot of things that are going on in the industry and you take to the program specific projects that you're working on. So the idea is that you can help to forge um, a pathway for those projects with someone as your coach. Now, we do that in the lead up for about at least six months up to screen forever. So the idea is you can use that sort of extra inner confidence perhaps about where you're at with your project and the fact that you've had it maybe, you know, the, the rough bits clipped off it a bit and maybe pushed into a bit more in a direction that they suggest they, you do. So that when you get to Screen Forever, you can use Screen Forever. The point of Screen Forever is lots of things. Inspiration, um, it's great to hear Bo Willimon talk about House of Cards. Um, to get drunk, it's great to be at the bar all night and just, you know, slam beers, great. Um, to learn things about the industry you don't know, but also, and for a lot of people, um, the 800 or so people that go there, most of them are trying to do business. And if you go to a, an event like that and you miss that critical part, you're, if you're there to kind of, I don't know, shoot the breeze and just, you know, oh, what's the world? It means that you're probably not approaching your career in a career sense, you're thinking of it as a hobby, and I think that's the shift. So when you go to these sort of events, being prepared, having your elevator pitch, knowing exactly who you are, what you are, what you're achieving, what do you want to achieve, having a goal, talking about a project in a couple of sentences and, and doing it in a way that doesn't harass <laughs> but excites people is a set of skills that you want to take to um, that event so that in any conversation you can just explain and be confident in who you are. And then there are specific opportunities that we set up that you actually pitch or you meet uh, and you can do a lot of actual business work in that in that space. So the point of, of the mentoring is A, it's great mentoring, B, you get the whole of the industry focused on you and we make a point of trying to do that throughout the conference and you're prepared, you're sort of a bit match fit for dealing with um, a, a conference like that. Um, I was surprised, I, I went a couple of years ago to my first South by Southwest and I thought that is the intensity in which the world is starting to move in terms of um, 
competition for ideas and, and intensity of people trying to do deals. Because if people know South by Southwest, it's where I first met Darius and um, he was a successful winner on a podium, being lauded by the world. Um, and what happens in that environment is everywhere you go, any lift you're in, any they, someone will just start talking to you and give you a, a little blurb or they'll show you an app that you've got to download then and there and they'll tell you what's going on. And it's done in a kind of a, or in a, in a queue for something and people will engage you but it will be done in a way that you come away not, oh my God, what's the, it's actually, oh my God, that's really exciting and there's an energy about it. And that's what we try to invoke in, at Screen Forever. We want it, people also to, also to have FOMO. They want we want them to f have too much going on, which is certainly what you had at South by Southwest. For those that have been, who else has gone to South by Southwest? Two, three, three. Yeah. Do you agree? The FOMO feel. It's way too much stuff. That's what we try to do. Who's been to uh, Screen Forever? Just so I. Oh, good. Yeah. I mean, uh, hopefully, if you have it, I'm also and maybe don't be too rude in the room, but if there's feedback, we certainly always like to hear it. Um, okay. Next slide. Um, one of the things we do is we kind of go around the country. We're about to launch this in the next couple of weeks, so this is why we're, I guess, talking about it. Um, we go around the country and we get a number of um, applications through the door, and then we whittle them down uh, through a selection process with Screen Australia um, to determine who it is that comes. And this last year, there were three from the ACT, there were five from New South Wales, there were two from Queensland, there were two from Tasmania, there was five from Victoria and two from WA. And Darius, you were one anyway, were you last year? No, two years ago, my God, how time flies. Um, there's a couple of things that we do um, and we have done through the program, but we're not able to announce yet because it depends on the sponsors. Um, but traditionally what we've had is an opportunity to pitch to SBS. Uh, in the past, they not last year, but the year before, they made a certain amount of money set aside or gave us a set of money for the whoever it is that won the pitching competition. Um, we're trying to get that money back into the system. Um, YouTube had a particular um, uh, sort of training exercise, but they also, I, th I think, had a mentorship um, themselves. And there was this, there's always been a screen internship that Screen Australia gives that group of people to the tune of about $20,000 to work with a host company from any country around the world. Um, so it's a valuable exercise in its own right, but there's also some sort of goodie bags to, um, not for everyone to receive, but a few people to receive. Um, this this program has become very recognised Australian-wide, which is great, um, probably because of the good work of the people that have been part of it. Um, and I don't pretend that I have had a lot to do with that directly. It's really the people that have been in the program that have done that. Um, th in 2016, we would had Nathan Mayfield from Hoodlum and Ed Pudchard from Prospero, Nathan Anderson from Start VR, Kylie Mascord from Ambience. I'll go, I won't go th maybe through all these because there's about 20 of them, but there's a good calibre of people maybe on the next slide, just sort of show everyone of the com companies that were involved last year. Um, and we, what we do, we try to also do a couple of dinners or a couple of an event or something at Screen Forever as well to give people maybe access on, and networking with their mentors and other people. Um, so when you're in that environment of 800 people, having that ability to tag yourself a once to watch person I think is a useful thing and I still hear that mentioned. Um, in terms of what we're looking for, which is the next slide, sorry Ken, I'm being very lazy. Um, I, I haven't put up here anyone in this room, but I, no, no, that's not because we weren't looking for them. Um, but w the criteria were that we wanted people to have at least four years of continuous and recent experience as a producer in a professional capacity. So it isn't for something for someone who's really, really very fresh um, because they won't, part of that is the, the trying to make sure there's something that you can really obtain at a certain level and you want the participants to be of a similar kind of stage in what their career is um, to be able to access what's happening and then also combine together because I think the other thing that I haven't quite flagged was that the, the community of people who are uh, the mentees um, do end up spending a fair bit of time kind of networking in their own right um, through the program and I think that becomes the sort of bridges that we were talking about or Graham at least was talking about yesterday about how do you build your career well you actually build it because of other people it's not done in isolation um, and look um, the other things we're looking for is one but no more than three because I think 
there's a point when someone becomes too experienced. Um, as a producer on a short film or a feature film or a drama or a comedy series or a non-fiction television series or a web series um, that's been in some way released. Um, so and it can be reasonably broad that, that way and there's sometimes there's a, a few edges we can knock off the strictness of that depending on where you've, you've managed to work. Um, it doesn't mean that you could be a line producer, you could be an associate producer, but you need to have kind of been responsible for the producing of in some capacity. And you bring to the um, the program, it's important that you have a project that you're wanting to develop through the Ones to Watch program as part of the assessment exercise. So it's not just that you turn up and you hope that something will fall out of the air. It's that, men that kind of mental game that we've been talking about, about needing to have something. You need to have driven your career. This isn't going to come to you. You need to figure out ways to figure it out yourself, but we're certainly able to elevate it. Um, and if you've already been selected, you can't be selected again. That's a shame. So um, last year's winner of the uh, mentorship was uh, Inga Lu, and her mentor was Donna Andrews at Sticky Pictures. And the mentorship last year was allowed, it gave a, an opportunity to, you know, join forces and create an, op an opportunity for them to um, have an internship somewhere where she hasn't actually selected where she wants to um, go. But the other thing we do is we give them people who are very discounted experiences at Screen Forever, but there are costs associated with that, so you have to be sort of realistic about it. You need to get yourself down to Screen Forever if you're going to experience that. Um, and uh, But we do try to make sure that you get access to all the things that um, are happening at Screen Forever and sort of speed you through roundtable bookings or pitching competitions and highlight lots of things for you as well so that that becomes part of the, the value. Um, and the last slide is just a, a couple of testimonials, um, or no, the second last slide. Um, just some comments, I won't read them. And the next slide, the only slide is there some dates, um, if people want to just note them. What isn't in there? Oh, Ken's got some um, application forms and some information which uh, you can come and grab or and or and it's just some information about um, who we are, if I get all of this official stuff out of the way. Um, there's a sort of information about membership and um, what the work that we do is in this little booklet and in this little sheet there's information about the Ones to Watch program um, and with all the details. Um, Yeah, we, we wanted to get them out to people so that in preparation, what can happen, of course, is you, you find out something's on and you may have a million things to do and you can't get your shit together. So we <laughs> part of the ex beauty of the timing of this, actually, is that we're able to give you guys the inside running and say, OK, you get a chance to a few more <laughs> weeks to get your shit together. Um, the, what's on, up on the calendar here is um, uh, missing the pitching exercises that we haven't yet locked in, but we are working with a number of people to uh, allow for. And that's like a streamline exercise to give you access to a broadcaster through the year that, excuse me, is hopefully, hopefully partnering with us and taking the projects on board. Um, and so we originally started that with um, a, a, a channel called Studio. If anyone got Foxtel, you know there was a, an arts channel called Studio. It was part of the SBS umbrella. Um, Studio um, was sort of became Foxtel Arts and SBS didn't no longer had that channel, but they, t they took on the program for one year. Last year, if, um, they took the view that the projects weren't that they were receiving from the Ones to Watch program weren't uh, strong enough. Um, they required too much development, so they wanted to approach it a bit differently, which was why, unfortunately, the last year's group of Ones to Watch didn't get the immediate access to um, the money. And so we've kind of got to redevelop that relationship, which I know is a bit of a disappointment for some of the people. But at the same time, those things, I think, has to be, have to be treated as bonuses. The, 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 the reason you do this is to um, fast cut or shortcut um, an opportunity for exposure. It's how do you get noticed? How do you get access to people? Um, and how do you do that in a meaningful way so it's not just a 15 minute exchange up here, you can, how do you kind of build those bridges? One of the, um, if, I, if I wrap this section just by, last year I, if anyone was in the room and I apologise in advance for the 80s music I did play last week, um, I did put up a spider's web to show what I, how I describe the relationships in the industry um, because I think the connections are not linear, they're angular and they go all over the place and the someone that you might have met in a bar in one environment you discover is 
employing someone in another environment or sitting on an assessment panel for an agency and, and all these connections end up working very well. So, and we might get to it, this second part, but the, the challenge for people, if you are in a producing space, you have to be very outward, you have to be a quite a gregarious, even if in, you're fighting that internally, you, if you, a lot of people who are introverted can switch on an extroverted frame. Um, and you need to kind of build the connections and relationships um, to be able to do any of your work because you're naturally needing to combine people together. And to be sustainable, you need to join forces with lots of other people and create trust in those relationships. On your own, you cannot do work in this industry. Um, with other people, you can achieve a great deal. And because it's usually about a lot of money and a lot of heartache, um, a lot of people's individual dreams and passions, uh, the trust that needs to sit behind a lot of working relationships is really critical. So you will find that as you weave your way into the industry, um, the, the, the soul that you take to the <laughs> every exchange is actually quite important. The, um, the honesty, the integrity, um, the way you're viewed, the way people understand you is going to be the difference between a successful career, in my view, and a non-successful career. Um, so this is about opportunities for people to explore your soul, if I'm going to get very meta on you, because that is the ba basis by which you're going to, um, I think, have a good career.